Wonderful. Well, thank you again so much, Cody, for agreeing to talk to me about this. I am so excited about your journey to WrestleMania, and I want to jump right in. So the theme for WrestleMania 39 and you is to finish the story. And one of the interesting things about this story is that for you, Cody Rhodes, this is a story that doesn't have writers in the room. Your journey growing up in professional wrestling wasn't written for you. Your journey leaving to carve your own identity, your bet on yourself to run all in and to start a new promotion, and your bet on yourself again to come back where it all began and to finish the story. To that end, what are your thoughts on your story in your career, and what does winning the undisputed WWE Universal Championship mean to you in this story? I, uh, I don't think I really noticed the unique pattern and the absolute kind of grandeur of this story until I really looked at it all in the last few months in terms of every piece of it. You know, for a long time, the piece of it was was unhappy and said, see it by, bet on himself, found some amazing partners, bet on himself again, and was able to, to make magic. And then the story really started to add up to be so much more. I mean, factoring in the whole reason I wanted to be a wrestler in the first place in the late, you know, 70s and Dusty having won that match, but not the title that you're talking about, not being able to leave with the physical title belt and then seeing that at eight years old, wanting to bring it to him and give it to him. Um, and the idea that the biggest event that's ever involved a ring from every measurable stamp gets to be headlined by, by me is again, like it takes someone like you, it takes someone like a Michael Cole where I hear it put all together. And I'm just thinking, yeah, this has really been an absolutely unparalleled hell of a ride. Finishing the story is so much bigger in terms of what does it really mean? Does it mean winning the title? Does it mean, what happens potentially if I do win the title? Does it mean not winning? I mean, does it, what does winning like finish? <laughs> I know how many uh, years are on my contract and I know how many years I want to do this, but I can tell you in my heart of hearts, finish the story probably means something different for everybody. And that's why I wanted to pass it to Sammy in Barclays. And then I heard it the next week. When he was on the microphone, and I'm I'm so glad that finished the story exists because it is not just descriptive of me. One of the things that I have thought a lot about lately is independent wrestlers and a lot of my peers in the WWE locker rooms and all over the world who are in the middle of their journey and they're at that point where they don't think they can go further, where they absolutely feel handcuffed and they feel like they're under a ceiling. And I just think and look at me and not just say, oh, he was Dusty's son. That's why I worked out. Because if you really look at what I know, that's not true. I hope they can go, hey, again, the biggest event ever that involved a wrestling ring in the history of sports entertainment, the biggest event is being headlined by a guy who used to wear a body suit and paint his face. And you won't see that guy out there, but that's who it is. And anyone can do it if they do the work. So doing the work allows you to story is what I hope. Absolutely. You know, I want to sort of bring this in. This is a great segue to talk about what happened on Raw this week, where you're talking about doing the work. And of course, this is your story. And it takes a lot of courage to face those changes head on and face adversity and sort of power through it. Now, Roman Reigns this week said that you've been running away from some of the greatest challenges in your career. But I beg to differ because leaving Stardust was you finding yourself, running all in and starting a new promotion was betting on yourself. And you leaving to come back to WWE was knowing your worth. But it feels a bit like your story as Cody Rhodes, not a character, not a, a representation on a screen, but you as Cody Rhodes, your story is on trial here. What are your thoughts on that? you know, what Roman thinks of the story and it, and it being on trial. Um, I've been on trial my whole career. 
I, everything is been on trial. That really is, it's, you know, from the time you're judged so early because you're multi generational uh, and the perks that come with it uh, from the positions that you're put in that are high up. Is that too much for that person to be in a, a legacy and to be, you know, flanked by the champion or the positions where you're so low? Uh, you know, stardust uh, out there uh, in terms of uh, the things that I was doing, where you're so low. Uh, it does, does that person deserve that? Everything is always on trial. And this, the greatest, the greatest thing about it is, is the the verdict is not decided by anyone other than fans. And that's why social media is is fun, but it also can be a little a little intimidating because there are fans who will try to tell you things as if they're facts and things as if no, that's what's that's what this is, and they'll use numbers. That's a huge thing I was part of. That I regret so bad when talking about demographics and things like that. Um, because the main thing that we do, the lifeblood of it, is the consumer fan feeling. And you really can't put a number on that feeling. You can only use those numbers to measure it in a sense of it's growing, it's growing. That growth usually indicates the feeling is bigger, the feeling is mutual. Um, I love that Roman brought up what he brought up in terms of running, you know, and I, I, I have to own that. I did mean adversity and I did not say, you know what, I'm going to put my feet in the sand and stay. I'm not going to put my flag here. I'm not going to get back up off the campus. I'm going to find a different can campus. I hate the expression trust process with all my life. Why not create the process? Why do I have to trust the process? I'd rather create the process. Roman isn't wrong that the business stung me and I and, and I, I had to move away from where I got stung. I didn't just continue to get stung. But with all that said, uh, it's ironic coming from Roman, who uh, you know, is a is a lifelong investment by WWE that is paying off, absolutely, but it just started paying. And uh, and I can't knock anything. I've talked about it with the greatest of reverence and respect. Because I know how absolutely dang special he is in our world. But also, you know, if you're going to get low brow with the comments like that, just remember that, uh, you know, if uh, me meeting adversity and going and changing my ways and, and going and betting on myself, uh, is that less value valuable than uh, meeting adversity and just pretending that it doesn't exist? Uh, Either way, it really shouldn't matter because you're absolutely as champion proving everyone that you're, you're everything that you say you are as champion. And I feel I'm everything I say I am as the American Nightmare. So it is up to the fans to decide the verdicts on uh, on these trials and on my my story and the journey and all that. And the things I did that weren't great. Uh, but I, I do all them as well as the things I did that were absolutely special and helped create that. Yeah. And you can't deny that you have an incredible connection with the fans as well. I know you mentioned, you know, the ups and downs with social media, but the connection that you have with fans in the arenas and around the world is something that is really strong. And I think really re unique with giving the weight belt to kids in the crowd or giving a special moment to somebody backstage. I want to switch a little bit and talk about that connection with the fans. Cause I know that you've said with regards to community outreach that you want to do good when the cameras are rolling or not rolling, excuse me, when the cameras aren't on. And I've seen firsthand how that impacts people um, there was a story with Ryan who you had some incredible connections with um, in different places. And of course, there are other people that you and Brandy have both reached out directly to help them in their time of need. Where does that connection get fostered within you in building those special moments with, with fans around the world? So I, uh, my, uh, my upbringing in the business I was tutored by and Pam was one of the very best at utilizing the community in a genuine way. 
but it would help in a business way. His heart was sincere in terms of he wanted to reach out to the Boys and Girls Clubs, to the Sheriff's Department, to the Rotary Club, um, uh, to, you know, to military activations throughout. And that was what created their ability to use the armory as far as uh, one of the Tampa mainstays for wrestling when it came to wrestling from Florida. Uh, so I was mentored in that sense, but I think it's less to do with that and more to do with the fact that my dad was the most generous to the point of, as you guys know, this, he was too generous. And, um, and even with that said, I know he wouldn't have changed how he went about paying people, how he went about granting opportunities. Um, it just was he, a generous spirit. I heard Vince describe him once as a generous spirit. And uh, I think I just got some of that. I do. I, I don't ever want to like, there's places that they got to film every 20 seconds of when you're Instagramming and, and you're giving food to, uh, you know, the less to, to the needy. And, and I always, they got the food, you know, but, but did we have to film it? Did, did we have to film it? And, and I, I kind of come to the conclusion that that's really my outlook on it. I understand if it's going to be out front, and it's going to be seen, okay, it will inspire more people to it. But I'm fine with it not being seen. I am. And this is, you know, my song, Wrestling is More Than One Royal Family. Everyone who's in a freaking seat, I family, even if even if they're mad at me, you know, like people don't realize I love handing that weight belt out to you know, the young kids at ringside. I also loved it when I was back in the ring. Loved it. There was a that we were able to develop out of it. As long as we're vibing, right? As long as we're connected and you're not watching something that's two-dimensional, it's three-dimensional and you're involved. And I know I've kind of rambled off of community outreach, but that, when I knew I was going to be leaving AEW, that was just a secret mission of mine was I am going to build a community outreach department uh, and I'm going to try and borrow a lot from the legendary Sue Agentson who, you know, helped create WWEs, foster these relationships with Make-A-Wish, with Stella's Wish, with the Special Olympics. And I'm going to find like-minded people that are fine if the cameras are on, but they will be doing this stuff when the cameras are off. Um, we have, Amy, if you print anything I say, please understand this. We have, the, we have a very silly vocation. It's real as hell to me, but it's silly. I'm out there half naked, covered in baby oil, throwing men around, hitting Cody cutters, uh, firing up, uh, getting getting my, my chest ripped open for the, the whole world to see, experiencing pain, uh, don't, administering pain. It's kind of a, a silly gig if you really look at it. So if that can make us famous, if that can penetrate worldwide, I feel like we owe it to pay it back. And in, in I mean, even like the collectors at the airport, which is a difference between fans and collectors, and everyone always puts fans in the tweets and don't realize those ones aren't fans. Even with them, I'll sign for them because this is silly. This is this is silly. And if, if this helps you in any way, this thing that I do, absolutely. Let me let me let me while I'm still living and while I still matter. Let me let me see if I can help you. I will say that, you know, I, I know from talking to families and friends, personal friends, that you have made a huge impact on people around you. And that's something that seems to have carried over throughout your entire career, at least as far as I've been watching you. Um, and I think that that's a really important bridge to build with people because people are, you know, cheering for these larger than life people on the screen, but they're also relating to struggle, to triumph, to challenges, to adversity. And a lot of them are, are, we're all facing our own in one way or another. And I know that, that, that your kindness and sincerity has made a huge impact on the people that you've created those moments with. And I also want to say that Amanda Huber has taken your mantle with community outreach and run with it spectacularly. And I think you'd be really proud. So I think that that's a wonderful part of a legacy to, to build and foster those connections I, with people where they'll remember that for the rest of their lives. I, uh, I learned from the best Sue Asian at WWE 
and I learned from Eddie Graham, even though I never met him. And Amanda has all those faculties. And uh, just the other night, I was able to work with Stella's Wish in uh, St. Louis for WWE. No matter the the locker room, I mean that's a privilege to do all those things. So as much as I appreciate everything you're saying, it is it's what we should be doing. So um, thank you very much. So you mentioned in this, you know, that kind of how how silly the whole spectacle is, right? Like you know, you're ripping your chest and tearing your pec muscle. You've had some incredible moments in your career. You're flying through flaming tables. You've torn your pec. You really do have a very strong inner fire that wants to persevere, this willpower that wants to push you at all costs. What is it that drives you through those moments that have to be very painful in order to to come through that and persevere? Balboa, uh, before the creeds, the Rocky Balboa movie, not Rocky, but the I guess the sixth Rocky, he hits the canvas and he starts to get these pictures of, uh, you know, of Adrian in his head and Mickey. And um, I, I think most of us who do what we do, uh, I like the word violent. It's not WWE's favorite word. Um, and I, I understand that and I respect that. But I, I let's say aggressive. I wrestle very aggressively and I love that. I even said it on Raw. Oh, I taste the blood in my mouth. It's so strange. But I do. And. When, when you're having to push through and you're tested, you know, and you're tested by physicality, physical combat, um, I have those pictures that pop up in my head. And they're, they're not what people think. You know, they're not dusty. You know, everything, he's so centered in so much of these things. Sometimes I have to tell him, even though he's not here, hey, get out of the picture. It's my mom, right? It's like, it's my mom. It's my sister, my daughter, like just they're the things that pop up and they're the things that help, help me. Those, those four, really those four, they help through it. I, you know, I, everyone wants this story on the pec match and I've had the worst answers every time because I tell everybody, yeah, that's what you would have done. I don't, I don't know why it was what it was, but I can say this, and this is just me finally kind of being in the most pain I've ever been in my life. Absolutely most pain. I couldn't bend over because it would re-cramp. I couldn't lean back. The jacket weighs so dang much in the first place. I mean, everything, every little step hurt. And walking out into Allstate Arena, this arena that like I consider a second hometown, walking out into that arena and that, that reaction from the fans before they saw it was, it literally filled me up. I could have I could have, I could have fought two Seth Rollins. I really could have. I was just for experience from an way back to that level. I want to know how I was able to perform and, and, and hell even jump uh, to the height that I, I, I was going. I just, again, you get those pictures, and those, those, and I had this entire, you know, 10,000 plus in one of the world's greatest cities uh, there. That's, that's why the, the that push you i'm in this business because i love it but you're not out there thinking gosh i love this you're thinking uh i hope i win the belt or gosh i hope i get paid more money there's something that's inside everyone that comes up and for me it's my 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 women you know it's my girls it's them and that, that's always been the case you know that's why i knew brandy was the deal and you know like i knew she was you know somebody i was dating that was the one yeah so those are what you know, those are what kind of keep keep me going in terms of those moments, those four. Yeah. Brandy's been at your side through all of this. And, you know, that you you both have gone through so many monumental changes in such a short time with the birth of your wonderful daughter and embarking on this new chapter with returning to WWE and now <laughs> main eventing WrestleMania for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. I mean, that's that's a huge, huge deal. Can you talk a little bit about Brandy and the importance of her in your journey to this moment? Yeah, I mean, um, I always, you know, I've, I've always run the risk of saying too much, but I, I try to be careful when I say, like, you know, I don't want to 
want anyone to be confused, but I don't get the opportunity to be a free agent unless Brandy Rhodes makes a certain decision that she made that was a selfless decision. So when you see me out there and I say, hey, I couldn't do it without Brandy, I ain't lying. That's 100%. And I don't want to say it makes me mad when I see a lack of acknowledgement. It doesn't make me mad because then you'll see acknowledgement and you that you know flutters you up. But the amount of people that Brandy recruited, I'd say hired, but technically, you know, she recruited them. She brought them to the dance. She vouched for them. They're active on TV currently. The medical program, uh, the sensory inclusion. Uh, and I'm going to go back to the medical program because that's a huge part of having a, a sport entertainment and, and a wrestling company. I mean, there's so many things that she contributed to and because she was this striking, uh, funny, uh, you know, divisive character on television. She was, she's never remotely seen the credit that she should. Hell, I've gotten credit for things that she did. And, and that's why I always quick to point out that, that nothing could have happened without her, me, Matt, Nick, Kenny, Tony, Bernie. That's it. Those are the names. Those are the names. Everyone's origin story is absolutely BS unless it's those names. And I just, I can't wait to see her out. You know, she's, she hasn't been to wrestling. Um, she, she hasn't been since she left. And, you know, like, I'm excited for her to get her moment, in a sense, and just be out there. I'm not talking about anything specific, but just be out there. Because one of the things is when you feel like perception is something, sometimes you don't understand that that's not really the case. And being around fans, sports entertainment, WWE, wrestling, it's the best fans in the world. And I know sometimes it's quick for us to just look at social and say if they're not. They are they're the best fans in the world. You guys are the best fans in the world. And I just am excited to see her kind of rubbing shoulders with all Hollywood and taking in the experience of what it's like to not just be at a WrestleMania, but to take the walk, you know, and I'm, I'm, she's not doing anything at WrestleMania. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I'm so excited for her to be there and be, I couldn't be there without her. And again, exactly what I'm saying without her, I literally couldn't be there. I'm not lying. So it's as much her moment as it, as it is, uh, as it is mine. And uh, I'm just very excited for it. She's just, you know, uh, if Brandy left me tomorrow, she wouldn't leave me because I will always be in her debt and be in love with her till till my lap. That's so wonderful. So I'm assuming then that Brandy and Liberty will be at WrestleMania to share this moment with you. Not, you know, as you said, to be careful about saying being at WrestleMania, but will will they will your family be there? To celebrate this moment with you, similarly to how they were there when you returned, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, I, I, I will, I'm trying to get the whole, I'm trying to get the whole family together. Um, I, we had a in 2007, my dad went in the Hall of Fame, and we were all together. And uh, and uh, I'm, I'm trying. I, I got like a whole task force together. I just even if we just get one dinner together, and even if we don't get the dinner, just. You know, I, I'd like them all to be together. Win, lose, or draw going into this thing. Like, it's, 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 you know, a testament to the, to the team. You know, your career grows so big that it's definitely not your own anymore. And I have a great team around me. And they'll all, they'll all be there. And, uh, and that's very exciting. Well, I've got a couple of quick questions before we wrap things up because I know you've got a busy schedule. Well, so, I want to talk real quick about your return at WrestleMania. I just rewatched your return and the way the crowd came alive in a most spectacular way. It was deafening. It was amazing. And now we're back at WrestleMania again, and we've got the crowd singing along to your song. The woes are so loud. What are your thoughts heading into WrestleMania, having this WrestleMania moment again with that crowd and with that energy that sort of, you feed each other with this sort of love in a very special way in a wrestling environment. I don't really have any patience in a sense that you never know what's happened in the night, you know, who's been out there, what they've seen and what their energy levels are like. And then you start taking in factors like edge is always so great to point out 
the building, the acoustics, the cavernous nature of it. It may be up, it may be down, it may be delayed. This is a first for me. I've been in a stadium before, and I've and I've taken this walk, but this is a first to be able to to be a, to take us home, to be going on last, and that's where I am at a disadvantage because it's not for Roman. This is number seven, I believe. This is. You know, as Bison pointed out, it's just another Tuesday for him, even though it's Sunday, but it's a Street Fighter, the moving quote, uh, whatever. Anyways, um, I, uh, I I think I don't want to give myself in any expectations and I'm going to do everything I can not to look at the crowd before I go out. Um, because we waited so long, guys. I'm talking specifically to the, the crew that's on board, right? I, we waited so long. Let's just enjoy it. Let's not let's not think about what it be and what it won't be and and that energy like that at AT and T AT and T Stadium last year that's what that was I had to catch myself up I think Mike Rome literally caught me up Mike Rome giving me one of the most amazing introductions ever literally is kind of what brought me back to oh I got to wrestle this guy and I got to beat him up I got to I got to wrestle this guy and I got to perform at a high level and I haven't wrestled in months. You know, that that was such a special moment. Now him and Samantha are going to go back and forth on who's the best. Um, but, yeah, I I, uh, I want to experience it all in real time. Uh, you know, now they're singing the song, which I never thought, because I always thought the lyrics were, were, were difficult. But, my God, they were just wrapped themselves around singing the song. And I we try now very much. Kudos to Kevin Dunn, for he likes to wait for them to say the woe and them have their moments and give it to them twice and we'll, we'll be ready to do all that and, um, and give them something that is literally happening in a way that I don't know how it's going to feel other than I, I expect and hope and again everyone out there if you're a fan and you're going to be there and it's, and it's wonderful if you're somebody at home grab a friend and show them this thing that you're watching uh, have them grab a friend, let them ask him questions. Well, do you like this? Do you not bring them into our world? Um, because if you're ever wondering, you know, you know this, it gets in your blood and it doesn't get out. It gets in your blood and it doesn't get out, whether you were born into it or not. And I, I just want us to be absolutely at a fever pitch, have that connection that, that uh, I've, I've been missing for so long and I've had in my my latest run with WWE. So I don't know if that answered your question, but that's, uh, I, that's kind of where I'm going. I cannot wait to hear it. And we will be at Raw Before Mania in Phoenix. So if you're there, we've been singing the entire time, just so you know, been singing it the whole time. But this time, I can't wait to sing it with a full crowd around me because that is going to be electric. Oh, Hopefully, I you'll can't be there. wait. To, uh, <laughs> I mean, if you've watched lately, I've been at every show. More is more with Cody. More is more. I've been on everything. And last week, I was a very random, not random, but it was a surprise booking to get to KC. And uh, I have, uh, again, WWE has got a great team. Makes it so they can get me there. And uh, and uh, and I can go. And I'd have it no other way. I remember telling uh, everyone around me when we won the Royal Rumble, hey, let's just put us on every show because that's where we need to be. Absolutely. Well, I've got one more question for you before I let you go. WrestleMania 39 is one of the biggest WrestleManias sure. of all time with a likely unlimited pyro budget. So will Cody Rhodes have great pyro or the greatest pyro? Oh my gosh. Uh, I, I would have to say you want to go with the latter, but with the greatest at this point, I'm going to be honest. I never asked anybody for pyro, even in AEW when I was running things, I never asked anybody for pyro. And then it became like a running gag, the amount of pyro. And now it's not even that it's just part of the experience. If you're going to get not just my entrance, if you're going to get the sky, it's like the fireworks at magic kingdom, you know, this happens at this time and they legit blow up the sky. And, uh, and I, I think with a WrestleMania, West Coast, Hollywood, that's ever been done involving a ring, I don't think greatest can even cover it. I really don't. I think uh, I think you're looking at a record-setting amount of pyro. 
That is going to be fantastic. Thank you so much again for your time, Cody. Really looking forward to seeing you at Raw Before Mania. Can't wait to see you at WrestleMania. You are main eventing against Roman Reigns for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship. It's going to be amazing. And I I really, really am so thrilled and sincerely happy for you to be in this part of your story and on your journey. And we are so lucky to be a part of it, to be able to watch it unfold as you tell it yourself. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm glad we were able to connect. Thank you very, very, very much.